happy Monday, and welcome to another episode of cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Today, we are talking about condoms and sexual assault. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Mr. Kirkpatrick was found guilty of a sexual assault after he had sex on two occasions with the complainant. The first occasion, the complainant insisted that she would only have sex with him if he wore a condom, which he did. On the second occasion, unbeknownst to the complainant, he did not use a condom. She testified that she would not have engaged in the sexual act with Mr. Kirkpatrick had she known that he was not wearing a condom. The question before the court became whether or not the absence of the condom constituted a sexual assault such that it vitiated the complainant's consent. This case raises very important issues because the Supreme Court of Canada has previously issued a very confusing judgment on consent and sexual assault in a case called Hutchinson. And this case tried to reconcile some of the issues that ra were raised in that case. But unfortunately, the Court of Appeal for British Columbia issued a split judgment meaning that the law didn't really become that much more clear. And this is obviously an important issue. Many people, smart people who are engaging in sexual conduct, know that you need to have protection when you're doing so. And that includes, in some circumstances, wearing a condom. And for people who want to only have sex when a condom is worn, they need to know that their consent is protected by that decision. If you can't put conditions on consent, after all, isn't consent not really consent at all? Consent has to be clear and unequivocal. And if there's a question about whether or not you would or wouldn't have consented based on the use of a condom or any other condition precedent, then maybe that consent isn't clear and unequivocal. These are important questions that the Supreme Court of Canada absolutely needs to deal with. People who are engaged in sexual activity with one another are entitled to certainty about whether or not they are consenting and whether or not they are obtaining consent. And in the circumstances, the Supreme Court of Canada really missed an opportunity to clarify confusing, unclear law in relation to consent and to clarify important issues that impact Canadians every single day of their lives. Hopefully the Supreme Court of Canada will have another opportunity to clarify these issues shortly and that people who are engaged in sexual activity will have some certainty about how they're to conduct themselves and how they can expect the people that they're with to conduct themselves while doing so. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada But Didn't. I'm Kyla Lee at Acumen Law Corporation. Thank you to Brazen Bull Creative for putting together these videos. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends.